All right. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to pull this one out. We haven't done this one in so long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need about five people to just shout Jesus in this place. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess his name is Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. His name is Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. His name is Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. For in three days he rose again. His name is Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. My provider. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. My protector. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Call his name Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, need to give God praise. Look. What's his name? What's his name? Every time I call on that name, Something happens in the atmosphere. Demons and devils are getting mad because you call that name. Oh! That name is Jesus. My rock, my sword, and my shield. Jesus, my buckler, my strong tower, and him will I fear. Somebody shout Jesus. Yes, Lord. 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 Who do you call when you're in trouble? Who do you call? When your back is up against the wall, who do you call? When you're sick and afflicted, who do you call? When your house is on fire, who do you call? Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord. Who do you call when your children are out of control? Who do you call? Hallelujah. When you're about to lose everything you got, I call on that great name. That name is Jesus.
rejoice. I found out that he may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. Some of us are still waiting on something that's supposed to be done next month. But I want to let you know that God is always on time. Amen, amen, amen. Look, 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 look. We're doing it. We, we, we doing it. We're doing a, a, a tag team on this morning in Ebu Shataha. Glory. You got Lashonda. She's going to be taking Denise's space on this morning. Speaking for Denise, but at this time, let's give up. Let's, let's stand to our feet right now. Ebu Shata. Yeah, Ebu Shata. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah, glory, glory, glory. Come on, somebody. Give God praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him. Here you go, right here. Yes, yeah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hot. Glory. Woo. Yes, God, you good. Hallelujah. Ten times better than the best, God. Hallelujah. Hey, he's on time, always on time. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. We come to the throne of God today. Hallelujah. Thank you, you for this wonderful church, God. Thank you for blessing us, God, to take this time out with you like never before, God. Hallelujah. Let your glory reign in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. Let your presence saturate us with you from on high, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Take over, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah for moving by your strength. Hallelujah for blessing us right now, God. Hallelujah for being an on time, God. Thank you for making a way for us. Thank you for blessing the pastor to let us take this time out with you like never before in this season, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for being excellent. We thank you for being almighty. Hallelujah. All powerful, God. Hallelujah. The way maker of all way makers. Hallelujah. The strength beyond all strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Let your glory reign in this place right now, Father God. Hallelujah. Touch us from the top of our head down to the bottom of our feet, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you for healing us, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for healing our minds. Hallelujah. Renewing us, God, with your strength. We need you, Father God, on today, God, like never before, God. We need you, Father God. Hallelujah. To touch us, God. Hallelujah. To make us over again. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for moving, God. Hallelujah. Thank you that your glory is everlasting. Hallelujah. That your power is everlasting. Hallelujah. And that you are the strength beyond our strength. Anything we need is by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. I've been, I, you know what, I can't, I can't tell y'all, you know what, Nehemiah has really truly blessed me, y'all. It has made me over, even in the spirit, I thank the Lord because of the strength that Nehemiah had, hallelujah. He had, I mean, the, the strength that he had, it was so all-powerful, I mean, whew, I, I can't even explain it, how he endured so much and just kept on pressing in the midst of every situation, Ooh, God just took over in his life and his, his, his presence reigned, hallelujah, like never before. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Ooh, God is good. Hallelujah. And God will reign in our life like never before. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm going to come from the scripture, uh, uh, <clears throat> Nehemiah 1 and 9. Thank you, God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 1 and 9. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I'm sorry. 1 and 9. 9 through, yeah, chapter 1, 9 through 11. Then I'll just, <clears throat> I'm sorry, but my voice trying to leave. But I rebuke it right now with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, hallelujah, though there where you, <clears throat> excuse me, though there where of you cast out unto the utter, uttermost part of heaven, yet will I gather them from thence. Hallelujah. And will bring them unto the place that I have chosen and set thy name there. God, hallelujah. God is good. He will set your name there. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by the great power. Hallelujah. And by the strong hand. Hallelujah. God's hand is strong. Hallelujah. Anything we need, it's already done. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's all powerful. 
We're talking about the great I am, hallelujah, that lives within us, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I beseech thee, hallelujah, I love this part. Let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servants, hallelujah, who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king cupbearer. Nehemiah was the king cupbearer, hallelujah. He made sure everything was good, hallelujah, <clears throat> for the king and I mean he was always I mean Nehemiah was just a great man he was just a great man of God and um and basically he pressed his way through every situation it, he gave it a praise I mean he put a praise on it every time he went through his different situations he just put a praise on it and gave his glory to God honor to God hallelujah but um he just he just gave everything on the inside of him when he was going through different situations and he trusted in God to push you know he kept pushing and, and God was just making a way for him to build the wall hallelujah God was there in the midst of every situation he encountered but every situation we encounter we got to trust in God because God will bring you through God will be he will be your cupbearer he will just be there for you he will just show you that I am the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to give me praise. I want you to give me glory. Hallelujah. Because I am here. I am here. The great God. He said, I'm here. Hallelujah. To give you rest in every situation. He, he, he'll give you rest in all of your situations and your, your different, you know, situations that may arise. But I thank God for being good. I thank God for being awesome. Hallelujah. Almighty. All powerful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the main things that he um, expounded on was, was reading the word of God. So we have to read the word of God and seek the Lord every day. I mean, not some days, every day. Seek his face. Hallelujah. I mean, get down deep with it. We got to wake up in the morning. I get up at five in the morning. And I have to pray and I'd be like, oh my God. Sometimes I'd be like, okay, Jesus, now this, you're doing too much. But you know what? God said, no, I'm not. It's because I'm making you. I'm molding you. I'm making you be the great woman that you are. I want you to walk, hallelujah, in my abundance. Hallelujah. You got to have the confidence of the Lord and know that he will give you strength in the midst of every storm. You got to put a praise on it in everything that you're going through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My, the breach that I'm doing for my mother is praise. Hallelujah. You got to put a praise on it in the midst of everything that we're going through. I'm putting a praise on it. Every time a bill comes and I can't pay it, I'm putting a praise on it. Hallelujah. Every time something just, you know, like, because, you know, every day it's going to be something. But we just know we got to trust in the Lord. Trust in God that he will bring you through everything. Hallelujah. He said, I am the great I am. I will give you strength. Hallelujah. But you got to come to me. You got to pour out your heart and mind. You got to look to me for your peace. You got to look to me for your strength. Hallelujah. You got to know that you're going to come through. That God will give you strength in every, every, every storm and every trial, every situation. Hallelujah. Nehemiah had unfailing hands. He knew that I can trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. That I will bring you through. That I am the great I am. I got you. Nehemiah, he knew it. He knew that God was going to be there for him when he was building that wall. So many people came against him every time. I mean, they came against him and they was like, oh, you know, you're not the man for this, that, and the other. He said, oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. He, he put on his whole armor when he came with them. He did. He put on his own armor. When he, when he came up on that wall, they was like, oh, you, you know what? Uh, you need to come up off that wall. He was like, I ain't coming up off nothing. I'm not, not today. Not never. And that's the way we have to be. We have to come. We have to stand on that wall and know that we got to stand for the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand on the promises of the Lord that God will bring you through every situation. Trust and believe. God said, I, 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 I'm, I come that I, you will have life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Not sometimes. He means all the time. I will give you rest. Hallelujah. He's the one that will give you rest in every situation. A ain't no more going to bed, going to bed and frustrated. You got to put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. Know that God will bring you through every situation. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to your name. We got to trust in the almighty. <laughs> know that he's able, hallelujah, to do exceedingly and abundantly all that we ask. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. He had a whole lot of resistance, but it didn't make him no difference. He said, I'm going to stand and know that I am. <laughs> I am, hallelujah. I am told me that I am. Hallelujah. I will give you rest. Hallelujah. I will be the peace in the midst of every storm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So he didn't come up off that wall. He stood there. We got to stand the same way with different situations that we're encountering in our life. Stand on the promises of the Lord. Hallelujah. Know that God will bring you through everything. Hallelujah. 
his struggles and triumphs are a great reflection of what so many of us go through right now today. Hallelujah. We just got to put a praise on it. We got to make a petition to the Lord and trust in him. Know that, hallelujah, God will bring you through every situation. Make a petition to God every day. Lord, I want you to do this. You know what I'm saying? God, make a way for me, Jesus. Just, come, just go to him. I'm telling you, if you just take that time out and pray and seek his face, he will show you great and mighty things. He will show you great and mighty things. Everything that you ever wanted or needed, it's already done. It's been done. But you got to believe that it's done. You got to believe that God would, you got to believe that God will make a way for you. Hallelujah. The next thing is you got to confess your sins. Hallelujah. God said, repent, repent, give it to him. Hallelujah. Keep pouring your heart and mind to him. Keep showing them. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. I know I did this, but Lord, hallelujah. Change me. <laughs> Make me over. <laughs> Make me new. <laughs> Make me right. Hallelujah. I don't want to do this without you, Jesus. I need you every day in my life. God. Hallelujah. I don't want to walk without you, Jesus. I don't want to talk without you, God. <laughs> God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. You got to confess your sins and give it all to him. Repent and know that he will make a way for you. Glory to your name. And then you also got to remind God, you said in, the, in your promises that you will promise us this, God. Hallelujah. In your word that you promise us this. Remind him every day. Remind him every day. The promises are yes and amen. Hallelujah. If you believe it's yes and amen, you got to really pour your heart on mind to him. Hallelujah. And trust in the Lord with all your heart. Hallelujah. Know that he will give you strength in every situation that you may endure. Know that God is with you. Hallelujah. He's the strength you need. Hallelujah. He's the friend that you need. Anything that you want, it's already done. Hallelujah. Believe it's done by the strength of the Lord. Believe that, hallelujah, your, the promises are yes and amen and it's already done. And believe that he will move by his strength and touch you, and fill you, deliver you, and set you feet free. But you also got to have humility, okay? In the midst of that, you got to have humility in your heart. Hallelujah. You have to be humble and know that God is going to give it to you. Hallelujah. When he say, hallelujah, but, but uh, Nehemiah was humble. Hallelujah. I mean, he was so humble. He was like, oh, what, what is wrong with him? He was very humble. He was just, you know, he knew that God was going to do it. His heart was just right in the right places to receive the great things that God had in store for him. And then uh, you got to finally ask and believe that it's, it's going to happen and believe that God will make a way for you in your situations that, that, that are arising in your life. I don't care what the situation, I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care if you don't have no money today. Believe God for money tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if your bills ain't paid. Believe that the bills will get paid tomorrow. Hallelujah. Even when your kids going through different situations, believe that they will be healed, delivered, and set free. Hallelujah. All of our lives. Hallelujah. It's all about what we believe. This walk with God, is, it's a lifestyle, and it's about what we believe. If you believe God will do it, he will do it. Believe it. Believe it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I have one little last part. <laughs> The, the big finish is giving your all to the Lord, hallelujah, and trusting in him, hallelujah, that he will give you, hallelujah, greater and greater in your life, hallelujah, and be a blessing to all of y'all. And believe, he, he wants you to live in the land of the milk and honey, hallelujah. He wants you to live in the land of the milk and honey and believe that God will, hallelujah, create in you a clean heart, hallelujah, that your, your life is aligned with his word. He wants you to be in the word of God, seeking his face and trusting in him that he will make a way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm done. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Look, Lashonda. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's give God praise. Now we got we got we got, we got we got we got another one from Deborah. Let's give God praise as she come up right now. Ooh, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God another hand praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is a good God all the time. Amen. I can't hear you. I say God is a good God all the time. Amen. 
Amen. Because we got we don't have to act like he didn't wake us up this morning because we wouldn't be here had he not done it. Amen. I just thank and praise God for what he is and what he's going to be and what he's going to do for you and what he has already done for me. I thank God for being the God that's able to touch and heal. He's able to deliver us. He's able to set us free. Hallelujah. I, I just can't stop thanking God because I had such a week. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Nobody know what I went through. We all got our own stories. What's your story? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a story. You got a story. But God knows my story because it's been hard. It's been tears. <laughs> it's been a lot of things going on. But only God knows. And I touched his heart and he touched mine. And he kept on and he kept on and he kept on. And you, I tell you, God is so good today, y'all. Something's trying to get behind that niece of mine. Amen. She's on fire. And let's catch a fire. Amen. Amen. Let's just catch a fire on today. I thank God for what he's doing in our life. I thank God for what he's doing personally in your life. We need to make it a personal thing. Amen. Amen. It could not become personal unless we have that relationship with God that we need. Do you have the relationship you need today? Amen. Amen. My word today is... Unhealthy. 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 I can't say it enough. Unhealthy. We have all displayed a lot of unhealthiness in our lives. Amen. Every day and all the time. Unhealthy stuff that keep us from reaching God at the place where he's at. But God is saying, I'm right here. And I can clean you up just like I cleaned anybody else, else up down in the miry clay. I, ain't even, I got some stuff on the paper. I ain't even went there. I'm just talking, y'all. I'm just going to let God have his way. Amen? Because God wants to do this thing for us. We live in some unhealthy lives. The stuff that we are doing to ourselves is unhealthy. The way we eat is unhealthy. The stuff we do to one another is unhealthy. We call ourselves church folks, but it's unhealthy. Amen? Amen? Amen. It's unhealthy. It's not God. But I can tell you what God can do for you if you keep your face in his word. He can get that unhealthiness and everything else out your life. Amen? I thank God for being able to touch and heal and deliver and set free all unhealthiness. I'm going to have Pastor Charles to read. Ne uh, Neonamo, Neon <laughs> Nehemiah, Nehemiah 1 through 10, chapter 1. Amen. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month of Chislof, in the 20th year I was in Shushan, the palace, that Hanani, one of the brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped which were left of the captivity and concerning mm -hmm. Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned certain mm -hmm. days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Mm -hmm. And I said, I beseech thee, O Lord, uh, God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keep, keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thy eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayers of thy servant, which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel, thy servant, and confess their sin and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my fathers have have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Saying, un, 
saying, I remember thee, remember, I, I beseech thee, the word, mm -hmm. that, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto to me and keep the commandments and do them, though, you, though, were, though there were of you cast out of the uttermost parts of the, of the heaven, yet I will gather them from thence and bring them again into the place I have chosen to set my name there. Amen. Amen. I didn't mean to even go there. I'm sorry. Amen. But praise God anyway. Uh, I just wanted to share with you that at this time, in that first verse, um, this was when Nehemiah was going through dis distress times in his life. And how many of y'all out here go through distress? I mean, we all, we all, we all go through distress, but he was distressed about because he had been talking to some people in um, Jerusalem and finding out what it is that he needed to find out to, that, to build this wall. And I need to get back to the, uh, something I want to share with you about the title, uh, about building the wall. And he was discouraged. He was dis di uh, distressed. He was going through something at this time. And uh, he also was... Um, a leadership, a man of leadership. Uh, he had great leadership in his life, and he was strong, a strong man, amen? And he knew that he knew he knew. He knew what to do. This was a distressed time and, con and uh, condition, and it also had a lot to do with uh, him facing uh, the unhealthy parts that uh, the people that came against him with every opportunity that they had to come in his life and come against him with opposition. Amen? And we are faced with opposition in our life, but we have to know that we got to turn to the Lord for that. We got to turn to the Lord and we got to ask God to work that thing out because the word directs us to his word. Our situation should direct us to the word of God. But the word we got to stand on the word of God. We got to understand that this is not about us. This is all about God. And we have to give that thing to God. But getting back to uh, Nehemiah, Nehemiah, excuse me, <laughs> uh, getting back to Nehemiah um, with this unhealthy stuff that's going on in his life that he was coming up against, it was nothing for him because Nehemiah stood. He stood up against everything that came against him. Amen? Amen. Nehemiah was what I want to be. Amen? I have read this book. I didn't know anything about it, and I'm still learning about it, so y'all work with me on what I got here because I'm like, okay, I had a rough week, but that's not an excuse. That's no excuse. I'm just standing up to let you know. It's no excuse. We still got to yet do what God has called us to do. And if he called us to take a stand and do what he say do, that's just what we got to do. Amen? So I know that I've been going through, but it still didn't mean nothing to me. I had to come yet still feeling like I feel. Yeah, I don't look like what, I, what it is, but I thank God for his strength and doing the will of God and doing the best that I can. Amen? Amen. The enemy wanted to snatch it, but I said no snatching today. I thank God because I got right on up and got right here, and it didn't take no medicine. It just took a mind set on Jesus. We got to keep our mind on the Lord. Amen? Because it's not about us. It's all about the Lord. Amen? Amen. Is everybody in here with me? Wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> Let's wake up today. God has been too good to us for us to come to church and just sit around and look like he haven't did anything for us. I know God woke me up, and I know he woke you up because you're here. So we got to give God the glory. We got to keep on pressing on. We got to keep thanking God for what he's already done. Because he said in his word, it's already done. We have all got a calling on our life. What's your calling for today? What's my calling for today? What are you going to do about Jer uh, uh, um, Nehemiah? What are you going to do about what call God called for you to do today? What's your calling on your life? Take a stand and do what God has asked you to do today. Don't keep looking like you're lost. 
Don't act like you ain't serving the God that has already done it, because he said he done it from the beginning. So let's take a stand today and act like we know that we know we know, because God is able to keep you from falling. He's able to touch you. He's able to deliver. He's able to set you free on the day. Let's stand up and give God the glory, because we couldn't have got in here today if it had not been for God. I done forgot everything that was on that paper. But I'm getting out right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm getting out what God wants me to get out to you. It's all about him. And we need to know that we know, we know. Hallelujah. Do you know today? We got to keep standing and standing and standing and standing. And I thank God for his word on today. Amen. Amen and amen, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give him a hand praise. Yeah, that's how we do it. Come on, amen. Come on, somebody, give the Lord a hand praise in this place. Know that you know that you know that God knows. Some of us, we have some unhealthy breaches in our lives. And, you know, Ms. Shonda, she spoke on a breach in your praise, I believe it was. And the next one is that uh, Pastor Terry, if she would hear, she would be speaking on was a breach in the mind, a mental breach. And I, I just, I, t I told her, I'll, I'll get up here and I'll talk about the mental breaches. Somebody give God praise right now. <laughs> Ooh, somebody, come on, y'all need to praise God right now. Because some of y'all didn't know when y'all was coming or going. That's when the enemy was attacking your mind. Somebody say, but God. But God. So... I, I'm not going to be for you long, uh, you know, powerful, powerful messages from two wonderful, great people of God. We thank God for that word. And I want to just talk to you about the subject of mental breach. And we're still going, we're dealing with the book of Nehemiah. We're, you know, we know that, how I many you know that God is able and I'm going to go over to one of my favorite texts in the book of Nehemiah, and it's going to be chapter 6. I love that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> because I want, to I want to talk to you about how the enemy tries to play tricks on you with your mind. And, and what he was trying to do to Nehemiah was that he was trying to play a mind game with Nehemiah. But when you are about God's business, it doesn't matter what the devil try to get you to do. It's all about what God wants you to do. Hallelujah. And, and I, I, I love the first text, and I'm going to read the first text and, and elaborate on just a few more verses in this text right here. But we got to understand that also... Even chapter 4 in the book of Nehemiah, they also got mad when they built the wall. And they were upset about that. Even though the breaches still existed and the doors weren't even put up, they were still mad because the wall was big, built. We understand also, even in the text, as you're reading the book of Nehemiah, you find that even those same enemies saw him uh, getting ready to build and of, of surveying the wall. And they say, even if a fox will walk amongst it, it will crumble and fall. But how many people in this room know that God can take a dead thing and restore it? Hallelujah. How many people in this room know without a shadow of a doubt that 
even if your walls look like they can't be rebuilt, God is a master masonry. He's able to, to rebuild anything in any condition. He knows exactly what to do at what time. Amen. So I, I, find, I find Nehemiah to be so interesting, even from the first time I began to preach out of it several years ago. And a mental breach is the kind of breach I was simply talking about earlier when it talks about, when I was talking about, you know, desiety was high. Something that you are, something that I was afraid was happening what really wasn't even happening. Until I gave it to God, I realized it wasn't even happening. God already had it under control. Some of us will deal with those uh, anxiety attacks and those mental, uh, mental breaches where we'll just be mad at the world. Anybody just felt like they were just mad for no reason at all. You know, just like, wow, you know. And you got some people, you know, um, that do it to themselves. They get a hold of the wrong stuff, and they are trying to ease a troubled mind by uh, adapting to other uh, adapting to other chemicals that will break the barrier in your mind and transform your thinking from good thinking to bad thinking and wrong thinking. But I found out a long time ago that your enemies are going to be the very one that's going to try to drive you up the wall. And, and, and if you're not on the wall, they're going to try to drive you up the wall. <laughs> but I found out that Nehemiah, he's on the wall, and there's no driving him up the wall because he was already on the wall. Hallelujah. So, 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 so therefore, the enemies of God are trying to infiltrate who you really are by breaking and getting you down from the wall but why come down off of something great to, to something that's like nothing god has placed me on a wall of stability and now the enemy has gotten wind of me restoring all the breaches and, and, and until I fix the breach in my, my mental breaches in my mind, I'm always going to be accessible to the enemy. So every time the enemy tries to do something to me, he always has access because my mind is open to his tricks and to his tactics. But until we realize that we have, there's a mental breach in our life, have you ever had somebody nag on you and they're trying, they're trying their hardest and you're trying your hardest to keep your eagles at bay, but they're constantly poking and priming, trying to pull you out of character, but somebody need to say, but God. Hallelujah. See, when, you, when, you're working, when, when you're working for God, no matter how much the enemy try to do or whatever they try to do, your mind is made up that you're working for the Lord. So he says, now it came to pass the Sambala to Bay and Gisham and Arabians and the rest of, of our enemies, those unnamed enemies, heard that I have built the wall and that there were no more, that there were no breaches left therein. Though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gate. These men got so mad that look, you can do everything else, but when you close the door to your mind, when you close the door to my, my livelihood in you, when you block all of that, now you didn't cross the line. But I need to know that without a shadow of a doubt, this is, this is God. God needs to know without a shadow of a doubt what, that you already know, like you said, that you know that God already is in control. Hallelujah. Because if you need God to block some things in your life, you need to go to God and say, God, I need you to seal this mental breach. Because if I go to work today 
and this woman or man say one more thing to me, I might just lose my mind. Woo. I set this anchor out here for a reason. I set this anchor out here for a reason. See, as long as the anchor is up, I can still sell on. But when my mind is made up to settle for Jesus, I lower my anchor and I'll stay right there until God move me from here. Hallelujah. And when he moved me from one place to another place, come hell or high water, when I raise my anchor, I'm still anchored in the Lord. And when he say, Lord, the anchors, hallelujah, I lower my anchors. And no matter what the devil throws my way, my mind is made up that I'm operating on the one cause, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, so, Nehemiah, verse 2 says, Then sent Balad and Gish, Gish, Gisham, sent unto him, saying, Come, let us meet together in, in, in some one of the village in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. If I had not sealed my mental breaches, I would have came down to oh no. But because my soul is anchored in the Lord, I have enough sense to say I'm not doing, I'm not coming down there. I'm not coming down there. Hallelujah. And he said, and I sent a messenger unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? While if I leave it and come down to you, you don't mean me no good. You ain't got nothing for me. All I do know is that you mean me more harm than good. So while I'm doing God's good work, I'd rather do the work of the Lord until the day he comes. Uh, so if you want to meet me up here, you're welcome to come up to the wall and I'll have a little conversation with you. But just know I'm not all by myself. Just know I'm not by myself. Just know that I got the Lord on my side. Uh, even though it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by the Lord. Uh, so I ain't got time for that oh no business. Uh, so oh no, you didn't think you was going to get me to come down off this wall. Oh no, you didn't think you was going to get me to come out this house. Oh no, you didn't think you was going to get me to leave my wife. Oh no, you didn't think you was going to get me to leave my husband. Oh no, you It's in the mind. It's in the mind that we serve the Lord. It's in the mind that once our mind get made up, come hell or high water, can't no devil in hell change my mind. Everybody's standing. Pastor Charles been speaking on the mind. And I know a lot of y'all, y'all minds are hard pressed. God say, look, you're not just having a mental breakdown. But the enemy is trying to break you. And the main reason why you're under attack mentally is because there's still a breach. You still have some breaches. You still have some breaches. I tell you, there's some, some of the breaches you're dealing with mentally don't even belong to you. Come here, Tori. Don't even belong to you. Don't even belong to you. 
Some of those breaches belong to mama, belong to daddy, and it goes even beyond them. The breach, that mental breach don't even belong to you. It has a lot to do with generations. But every breach mentally is an opportunity to learn that mama and daddy dealt with these same devils. But here's the thing, here's the thing, mama and daddy, is that when you see those breaches come in your children's lives, you say, get behind me. I'll, I'll do the fighting. I'll do the praying. Because while she's still learning to pray for herself, hallelujah, I need you to stay right behind me and follow me. You need to follow me. Because whatever's trying to get to you got to come through me. And before it can even come through me, it got to go through God. Because the only person going to give them, them the enemy access through me to access the next generation behind me is God. Because when, they, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God said, I'll lift up a standard. So every time the enemy tries to attack her, I stand right now saying, access denied. Access denied. Look at your child and, and let the devil know, access denied. Access denied. Because the enemy want to access your children. I'm going to tell you how you know. I'm going to tell you how you know that the enemy has already accessed your children. Because some of the same things you dealt with in your past, you will see it operating in them. And then that's when you come back and you start praying for your children. Laying hands on them and say, devil, you have been denied access into this generation right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I bind and I rebuke you from my sons and my daughters. I cast you out back into the pits of hell. You no longer have the power to operate in her life. The access has been denied. From now on, you got to get permission. You have no... So the mental breaches that I dealt with, she no longer has to deal with because I denied access. Denied him access. I want when y'all leave today, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, I want y'all to say a special prayer from them in your closet, your alone time. And let the devil know, I now deny access. I deny, now deny access. See, because the mind, the devil's trying to get our children to kill themselves. But I deny you access. Access. The kingdom suffered violence. But the violent take it back by force. Somebody need to say, I'm taking it. I'm taking it back. So, I'm taking back my sons and my daughters. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm mending broken hearts. I'm restoring broken bridges because I am now denying the enemy access. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you one more thing. The control that he has over our children and most of our minds. Before you deny him access, you need to deny him access to your mind. Because whom the Lord set free is free indeed. Because you need to deny him access right here. Because the moment you deny him access right here, hallelujah, then you have the common sense to deny him access right here. 
And then when she start having children, you go behind her and get behind her if grandma and granddaddy still live and say, I deny you access to this generation. And then she'll have enough sense to deny access. Because we're no longer, no longer going to allow the enemy to have access to our sons and our daughters. Because they are now becoming walking zombies. Social media. You have to be careful on all kinds of levels. Because the enemy will access their mind through social media. By the time you realize it, mama, daddy, by the time you realize it, he would already have access. He would already have invested time and energy. And the breach that you think is small, it's bigger than your eyes can see. Most times it takes years to restore. It takes years to pray over that. When there's a crack in a bridge, they can't just go and patch the bridge. The bridge had to be torn down on that section. Months to repair. So don't think you can just fix a breach overnight. It's a process. And God said, as long as you stay on it, the process, I will heal your land. Go ahead, take a seat. Ooh, ooh. I'm taking back my mind. I almost lost it, but I got my mind back. I want to pray. I want to pray right where you're standing. Boshata. And I, I want you to, I want everyone to just lay your hand on your mind just now. That mental. Because the enemy, only thing he wants, before he can get you to do anything, he got to have access to your mind. And once he can get access to your mind, He can do just about, he can have you doing just about anything. Woo! He can have you seeing stuff that you ain't even seeing. That ain't even true. It's the mind, Father, right now. I'm asking that you would touch every hand right now in this place, right now. Those that are watching Facebook Live, YouTube, God, touch right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch the minds of your people. Let this mind, which is in Christ Jesus, also be in us right now. God, seal the breach of the mind, that mental breach, that, that stressful breach, that they're about to lose their mind. God, seal it right now. Seal it in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I know that there are some of us, we're dealing with decades of breaches mentally. But God, I know that you can do it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say restore. restore. God, do it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Turn every nightmare, hallelujah, into a past thing. Restore the mind right now so that your people can be free to praise you. So that your people can be free to worship you. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. Ebo Shatah. Touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Seal every breach spiritually, mentally, and even financially. Make the devil out of a joke on today that your will will be done in their lives. Now repeat after me, Lord, forgive me. Come into my heart and in my life and be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, somebody shout, I'm free. Come on, somebody shout, I'm free. Come on, somebody shout, I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you know that every breach is a process. Because just because I put a seal over it don't mean you're healed yet. It's a process. 
If I go and seal the seal and the crack in the foundation, it takes time for the mortar to dry, to harden. But if there was something behind the wall that was pushing up against what I've already sealed, the process will have to be done over. The enemy wants to keep pressing on the process. But I serve a God that said, I'll stand between you and that. I'll deal with him. You just keep on pressing. I'm going to open the doors of the church right now. If you're not a member of Redeemed Faith Fellowship and you want to become a member of Redeemed Faith Fellowship, you may do so at this time. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Fight my battles. Right where you're standing, we're going to do the benediction. Surrounded by you. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank and I praise you for what you have been doing in our lives. I thank you, God, because all things have become new today. We have received the word from you. And now, God, as we go from this place, but never from your presence, may you rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say amen. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Real, real softly, real softly, real softly, real quick. Anthony and Charlene, Prophet is young and uh, Pastor uh, Hibbler, they both will be going to Atlanta next week, right? It's not this week. It's the fourth Sunday. I know next week. Not this week coming up.